Hi guys, welcome back to part two for the work in progress postcard. Uh, always a work in progress, ha, no pun intended. Um, I thought since we started uh, last time with Uprint, uh, that maybe we would start uh, this time with Vistaprint, uh, just so you can see the process and workflow for that company. So if we go to vistaprint.com and we search under marketing materials postcards, uh, you're gonna get some information about the different postcard types they have. Uh, again, we are going to do a horizontal 5x7 postcard. Uh, I'm going to select premium as my paperweight. Uh, I'm going to select glossy front. Uh, and I'm going to pick 250. And we can see the price is 51. Now that's for a front only. When we get to the back, um, let's see if I type this. Uh, you can see it's much, much more expensive. But when we upload our stuff, uh, we're going to actually get a different pricing. So I'm going to go through that process so you can see it. But right now we can actually um, go ahead and either download the Photoshop template. Now in this case, the template already has some items in it, which is kind of annoying. The other way we could do it is just to go to our product specifications here, which all companies will have. You're going to pick your standard 5x7 postcard um, and you're going to go to the product spec for that postcard. So under 5x7, which is what we got, and we're going to be using Glossy, so we'll just go ahead and take a look at that, although I have a feeling they're probably pretty similar. You can see the bleed size uh, that they're giving you is right there. So if you wanted to create this postcard from scratch, the easiest number to remember is 2135 and 1535 pixels, because you know it's going to be 7.12 times uh, by 5.12 at 300 pixels per inch. Uh, but to get the exact pixel count is going to make it even easier because you'll know you'll be exactly right on uh, par. So uh, let's go ahead and go to Photoshop and uh, create a new document with those exact settings. So why don't we just go, um, let's see, inches. Uh, we're going to do five by seven. Um, actually, let's do pixels because we want to go, we want to put the bleed size in as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And the size was 2135, 1535. So 2135, 1535. We know it's 300 pixels per inch. We're going to pick RGB color, although your template probably would be CMYK, right? But we can change it here if we wanted to. And we're going to go ahead and hit create. Now we, we know that there is an, uh, a little bit of a bleed in here, but it's not the same amount of bleed as before. If I go to image, image size, you'll see that 17.17 um, and 15.17 is fairly similar to what we have here, right? But it's, it's rounded here, whereas here it's a, a little bit less rounded, obviously. Uh, but the pixel count is the accurate one, and that's what we want. So remember that you definitely don't want to be like anywhere near where the seven by uh, where any of these extra. So don't overlap the edges. Make sure you keep your text nice and away from the edges. Anyway, we're starting with a blank background like we've done before. And we're going to open up a couple of images. Actually, we're going to try something a little different. We're going to go to our image folder here. And I would like you to open up um, this Bryant Art Center uh, photograph that I took, just double clicking it or however you do it so you open it up in a new tab. You can kind of see the tab here. And you'll move the tab out of the way just like we've done before in the past so that you can see the layer and then you can see the other file back here. And then we're going to drag this layer into this area and let go. And because I know that behind this Photoshop thing there's my other uh, open tab. I'm going to get to it and I'm going to close it because I don't need it anymore. So now we have an image that's in the layer and I'll just call this Bryant Art Center. That's the photograph. Uh, and we're going to need one more photograph. So again, we're just going to go to our desktop and we're going to find uh, the photograph that we had seen from the front. This one, which is 1557. So again, I'll just open it in Photoshop, move the tab out of the way, and then drag this layer into the other layer. And you'll notice both times I've done that, I've done that I did not need to rasterize these layers because uh, when you drag like this from one tab to another, uh, you don't create a smart object or a smart layer. Okay, so we've got two things. Uh, this is gallery. 
view. And for now, I'm just gonna turn these off uh, just so we have something going on here. Now, um, I want you to, uh, about a third of the way down, like this, I want you to go ahead and put a guide. Uh, I think we've talked in class about like the rule of thirds, where if you put something in on this guide or near this guide, this is like where people are normally watching. In fact, if you break this up in two thirds, these are the in points of interest in the card. So just something to think about. But uh, I wanted you to give me at least just like one guide here at the bottom here. So by the way, you can always take these guides if you've put them on, you can pull them back off and just put them to the ruler and they disappear. So you notice how I just did that. So just take, if you wanna make this guide go away, just drag it back onto the ruler and it's like it puts the, the thing back. Okay, I um, can't see the whole thing, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to hit this little plus button so it's filling up the screen. So what I'd like on a new layer, I'm just going to hit the plus button for the new layer, and I'm going to call this bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our marquee tool. And we're just going to create a little like rectangle that goes all the way across the card. And is about like the height I have here is about 3 point or 0 0.320 inches. Uh, I've got my marquee there, and it's a rectangle, so obviously we're going to go fill it. I'm gonna fill it with black, so if it's not, your foreground color is not black, you can hit the letter D for default, and you'll notice this gives you the default color black uh, and then a white background. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill that bar um, marquee with that color. I'm going to deselect Command D or deselect Command D. And I do not need this guide anymore, so I'm gonna select it and put it back up into the ruler so it's gone. And now you see if I use the move tool, which I always click on because I just love doing it, you can see I've now got a bar. I'm gonna put that back where it was uh, in the space where I want it. Now, uh, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and turn on the Bright Art Center uh, photograph, zoom out, command minus a couple times, and you'll notice uh, that this photograph is much bigger than we need it to be. So I'm going to um, modify the size, transform it, command T, and you'll notice um, it's uh, transform mode. And I'm gonna make it small enough where it actually uh, is about a little bit wider than the card. I definitely don't want it to be smaller. Just about like that. And then I'm gonna hit the return key to set that uh, look, okay? So you can kind of see right now that there's some issues with it being a little bit crooked, right? So we're gonna fix that. There's a way we can fix that. If I select transform again, command T, uh, and I zoom in, I'm just gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna put a guide here just so you, I have an idea what a vertical line looks like. Now, if we could distort this selection, you'll notice that if you grab a corner, it just scales it. But if you hold the option key down, um, I'm sorry, the command key down while holding the corner, you'll notice that you can deform this corner. So in a lot of ways, you can actually then kind of modify the shape itself. And what I'm trying to do here is to see if I can get these guys, you notice how this one's kind of going off. If I can bring this in maybe a little bit like this, I'm holding the command key down on the Mac. And I'm trying to see, like for instance, here I would like this to be perfectly uh, on this ruler. So I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. And I'm just trying to, here's another space down here. You can kind of see how this bottom line is going down. So I want this bottom line going up. I'm not worrying about too much about um, like, you know, what's going on. But what I'm trying to do here is get this to be as if I took it from a straightforward flat view, you know, straight ahead instead of, you know, from above or below. I'm changing the perspective so that um, it's, you know, perfectly uh, aligned. So again, holding the command key down allows you to modify these corner points um, and distort the image. And you can see now that it looks pretty pretty good. And if I hit return, now I've got this uh, Bryant Art Center element kind of ready for what I wanted it to be for, which was I wanted some interesting texture down here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move it down, something like that. I'm gonna get rid of the rulers, uh, just get rid of all of them by going to view uh, clear guides. And this is where we're, we're starting. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is turn on the gallery view uh, image. 
and I'm going to zoom out again, Command T to transform it, and I'm just going to make it small so that it actually fits in the card space, just like so, right? Make sure that it goes right off to the edge. I'm going to hit Return, and I'm going to use the guides again to get this line here, this line, to be perfectly straight. So you can kind of see now it kind of slopes down. Um, I can do it just by Command T, transforming, and then rotating. So because this card looks pretty straight, I could fix some of the stuff. Like you notice, like if I put a ruler here, this, this looks pretty straight. But if I put a ruler over here, or even over here, you can kind of see that the wall itself is, is not totally straight. It's kind of a little bit off. Not much, though. In fact, to a point where it's barely noticeable, but just a slight amount. So you could scooch this in just a little bit. It's not necessary. Uh, I'm going to hit return. And because it, I scooched it in here, I'm going to transform it one more time and make it a little bit bigger so that it actually goes a little bit over the edge. And there we go. Now I'm going to move this card up. And you notice the bar that I made? It gives me a little bit of a leeway so that I can hide some of the stuff going on here uh, with the stuff going on here. So at this point, uh, I'm going to move this over here. Uh, we've got a card where the gallery is like above and then below we've got some uh, interesting texture and part of the building going on. Now this below part I wish was a little bit more colorful and so we can select that below part, the Bryant Art Center layer, go to Image, Adjustments, and we're going to go to Vibrance and we're going to really bring the Vibrance up quite a bit and you can see already that's really interesting. And I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Brightness, Contrast, and I'm going to increase the contrast so that these dark areas are a little bit darker and lower the brightness. There we go. Now for this top area, my idea was if I could put the word uh, work in progress in this area, I think that would be really nice uh, as like a break between everything. Um, these rulers are getting in the way, so I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of them. Clear guides. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer below the bar layer. So I'm going to hit the little plus button and I'm just going to call this white. And I'm going to put it under the bar. And what I'm going to do is make a marquee and just marquee around this area, which is the glass. And then I'm going to fill this with solid white. So I'm going to use the paint bucket tool. I'm going to hit the X button. Watch what happens. X. And what the X button does is it switches the foreground and background color because the default color D was black with a white background. So I wanted white and I'm going to go ahead and hit that and fill it. OK, and now I'm going to go back to the move tool and we're going to dial back this opacity for the white layer to about let me be 50 for now just to see how that works. And you can see right now that um, I'm going to deselect because I've got some selection here going on that we have the ability now to put some text here and it would look pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the text tool T for text. I'm going to click somewhere around here. I'm going to change my font to Helvetica new. And I think I'm going to use I'm going to see what condensed bold looks like and I'm going to put work in. I'm going to change the font color to, I'm going to pick a color that is in this area. Uh, I really like what's going on with this red. And you'll notice that if I have the font, if I have the font color picker open here and I can change it to whatever color I want here. But if I move outside of this block, I can actually choose a color just by clicking somewhere uh, on the image itself. So for instance, this color right here, which looks like black but actually is more of a blue color is interesting um, maybe this red color is interesting let's see how that looks now i'm going to move this here work in progress i'm going to move it so that it's away from the edge remember give yourself a little bit of space on the corners there to make sure that it doesn't uh, nothing bad's happening and it does bring this color up into this area and kind of is reflected here as well so I kind of like what's going on here. Um, just moving some stuff around because I, I wanted to see what it might look like if I have this more like that. I think that could work. I like this abstraction. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So um, let's see, what else was there to 
to look at. Um, maybe I could take this white and bring it up a little bit more so that it really focuses on the text itself. And like you're going to do the back, my suggestion is once you find, found uh, like a font for your title with the font that you like, in this case it's Helvetica New Bold, right? Condensed Bold. Um, my suggestion for the other text that's more legible, like so if you needed some more text, I'm going to hit the T button. I'm going to click somewhere up here and my suggestion would be to, like to pick another text that has these things called serifs and these serifs are the things that are like the bottom parts of the word you've seen them in times new roman but these things these little like things that make things more readable uh that that kind of are you know part of the the letter there these are things that are called serifs these this doesn't have those serifs as you'll notice right uh, that makes it a little harder to read as if it were large blocks of text, but for uh, for large you know headlines, uh, sans serif, which means without serif, um, is what we want. So I'm going to pick the sans serif as my font or type uh, for the, the the title, and then I'm going to choose a sans serif or a serif font. Uh, for something like an additional piece of information or something readable. And I'm just going to put uh, art show. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to change the color back to black to kind of reflect this black line. I'm going to change the size. I'm going to take the move tool and put it over here and just see how it looks. What I'm trying to do is a little bit balance this left side with this right side. You'll notice that if I put a ruler here that I'm kind of looking at how much space I have here versus how much space I have on that side and trying to equally kind of distribute that. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with this. I am looking up here and I'm seeing that this top part does kind of slope down, which is distracting to me. I hope you're noticing me using a lot of these rulers just to kind of like fix things. So let's go ahead and fix that sloping down part using the technique that we've already used. I'm going to select that layer, Command T, and I'm going to hold the Command key down and pull up on this side, but not going left or right, just going up. And what that's doing is keeping everything vertically straight, but it's making this side, this side go up a little bit, and now this looks a lot more uh, correct. Command or View, Clear Guides. And now uh, here's what we've got. Maybe this is a little yellow. So again, we can go to their gallery view here, go to image, adjustments, and we can either dial back the vibrance or we can go to our color balance perhaps. And maybe uh, what's the opposite of yellow? Uh, blue, right? So put a little bit more blue into that image uh, to dial back some of the, that color that we're seeing. Um, and I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Um, as we're as we're ready to export this before we export it let's go ahead and go to file save and we're going to save this as a Photoshop document so that we have all the layers um, postcard W work in progress WIP I'm gonna put it on my desktop but this is not what you're turning in right you're going to be turning in the file export or save as uh, the JPEG so we're going to go to JPEG and we're going to file postcard work in progress and hit save. Uh, we're going to make it 12, it's 2 megs, it's, looks like a good uh, size. And now at this point, if we go to our desktop, you'll see that postcard, the JPEG, which is all flat and ready to go. And you'll see the Photoshop document, which is much bigger in size. You can see how much bigger it is, 26 versus 2. Um, and it has all the layers, so we can always go back if we misspelled something. Let's take a look at Vistaprint. And uh, if I were to go back to Vistaprint, select horizontal, 5x7, premium, glossy front only, even though it's something we're going to fix. We're going to hit the start designing. It gets us to the next screen. Uh, we're going to upload our own design. So I'm going to click on this upload button. Um, and it'll say front side here, and it'll even say add back side. So if I add a back side uh, for $250, $10 more will give me a grayscale, which is what you should have, right? Uh, and so I'm going to go to the front side. I'm going to uh, upload this from my computer here. 
it's the JPEG. And it's uploaded. There it is. And you can see the safety line is shown um, and everything looks great according to this. If I click the next button, you can upload the backside as well. And the backside we will be going over in the third part of this tutorial, how to lay out just text, but you probably have that idea already. Um, if I hit next, let's see if it'll get me to the next screen. And this is a really cool screen because you could capture this uh, with your, um, like I'm just gonna view this. You can see how it has the postcard with somebody holding it. This gives you an idea of the size. So if you were to use this in your Behance page, you can do this just by taking a screenshot and then adding that to your Behance page so the faculty would see what this looks like. Uh, this gives you an idea of the size and this would be the back. Uh, once you're happy with the design, you would then pay for it. That's something I'm gonna do. So I'm hoping this really helped you. Uh, again, it's just another way of like approaching making this postcard um, and giving you a little bit more um, you know, uh, like experience working with layers, um, modifying them and working with um, large blocks of color and text and blend modes and those kinds of things. Okay, thanks.